Hi guys, thanks for watching. My name is Lauren. I'm an ICU nurse and I enjoy helping people memorize pharmacology and giving them memory tricks and mnemonic devices so they can use that information on an exam or in practice. So today I'm going to be talking about ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers. So ACEs and ARBs. I'm going to start out with some memory tricks of how to remember which drugs are ACEs, which drugs are ARBs, um, and what those drugs do as well as some side effects and then I'm going to give you the background on why this actually works the way it does. So let's start with ACE inhibitors. Um, and ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme. So ACE inhibitors are angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. And I want you to imagine that you are playing cards with a bunch of people. So you're at this big table playing cards and you draw an ace. And you're excited because aces are really good in this game. And so you don't want to say anything out loud, but in your head you hear this noise like, Pearl, Pearl, you're excited. Pearl, Pearl, I have an ace. And that's because ace inhibitors end in Pearl, like lisinopril, enalapril. So Pearl, Pearl, I have an ace, you're really excited. Then you're playing as teams and someone on the other team has to get up and pee like 20 times a game and it's really annoying. Um, and so he's peeing because when you take an ACE inhibitor, you end up peeing out your sodium and your water and that's how it helps control hypertension. So this guy keeps peeing like 20 times. Um, and as he's getting up to pee, he always walks behind you and takes a glance at your cards. And this time he sees that you have an ace, and so he sort of coughs to alert his team members that you have an ace. So <coughs> ace, <coughs> ace. So ace inhibitors cause this really annoying cough. So those are the keys for ace inhibitors. They end in pril, because pril, pril, I have an ace. They make you pee out your sodium water because you're... Um, person on the other team keeps getting up to pee a million times and they end up causing an annoying cough. <coughs> he has an ace. <coughs> um, so you're playing with these people and you say, you know, I'm done with you guys. I'm going and I'm starting, starting, I'm starting a new team or a new group of card players um, and they're basically going to do the same thing as you guys but they're not going to have annoying coughs. They're not going to cough when I have an ace and cheat because that's really annoying. Um, and so here down here we have our ARBs. So your angiotensin receptor blockers work a little bit later down the pathway, but they end up doing the same thing. They end up causing you to pee out your water and your sodium. They decrease your blood pressure but they don't have that annoying cough because they work farther down this pathway. So your sartans are the ending for all your ARBs, like low sartan, val sartan. And there you go. That's your memory tricks for aces and arms. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about why this is true and give you a few more tricks to remember the more detailed version. So ACEs and ARBs work because of your renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. It's hugely important. I strongly recommend you memorize this now. Um, it came up in human physiology. It was on nursing school exams, the NCLEX. Um, I had to know it when I was taking my ICU certification exam. This will come up again and again. Just memorize it now and make your life easier. It won't go away. So I'm going to write through this pathway here. So this all starts because you have decreased flow to your kidneys. So your kidneys say, I'm not seeing enough blood flow. That means I must not have enough blood. I need to retain fluid. Um, and I'll do that by retaining sodium in order to increase my blood flow, my circulatory volume. So that's the, the end result of this. So decreased blood flow to your kidneys. Your kidneys release renin. And renin causes angio, angiotensinogen to convert to angiotensin 1.
and that's not hugely important, but you need to know that angiotensin 1 is created. And then angiotensin 1 converts to angiotensin 2. And that is via an enzyme in the lungs called angiotensin converting enzyme, right? Which makes sense. We're converting angiotensin with an enzyme in the lungs. So angiotensin converting enzyme. And that's where our ACE inhibitors end up working. I'm sure you can predict. So angiotensin 2 does a number of things. One, it's going to tense your angios. It's going to cause vasoconstriction. So it's going to tense your angios, cause vasoconstriction, and then it's going to go to your posterior pituitary. as well as your adrenal cortex. Um, and we'll talk about ways to remember those in just a second. So your adrenal cortex is going to release aldosterone, which is going to go back to your kidneys and tell it to retain sodium and water and pee out potassium as exchange for your sodium ion. Um, on this other side here, your angiotensin 2 is going to go to your posterior pituitary, which is going to release ADH, which stands for antidiuretic hormone. And so antidiuretic hormone, um, diuretic means pee, so antidiuretic is going to say don't pee. And if you're not peeing, you're going to retain water. So that's the key there. So how do you remember adrenal cortex and posterior pituitary? Well, adrenal cortex, I'm going to draw up here in the corner. Um, they always illustrate it as sort of this cone triangle shape. And the outside is your cortex. So I think crust, this crust is on the outside. So crust for cortex. On the inside is your medulla because it's in the middle. So crust for cortex. Um, I think of like a salty crusty um, because your things secreted from your adrenal cortex end up telling you to retain sodium. So salty core. Text. Um, your posterior pituitary, how you remember what comes from that is that ADH and oxytocin come from your posterior pituitary. And everything else comes from your anterior pituitary. So everything, especially things that have tropin in them or releasing hormone in them, all come from your anterior pituitary. So like adrenocorticotropic hormone comes from your anterior pituitary, gonadotropin releasing hormone, thyrotropin releasing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, all that comes from your anterior pituitary. Um, so if you just remember, posterior pituitary secretes oxytocin and ADH. Everything else comes from my anterior pituitary. If in doubt, you'll be good. So if you want, you can remember PO, po posterior, goes with oxyco oxytocin, um, and then remember that ADH and oxytocin go together. So your posterior pituitary secretes ADH tells you to retain water. So let's find where our drugs work. And so we have, remember we have ACE inhibitors and we have ARBs. So we'll talk about ACE inhibitors. Um, you have decreased blood flow to your kidneys. Your kidneys release renin. Renin causes the creation of angiotensin 1, which wants to convert to angiotensin 2 in your lungs. But you have taken your ACE inhibitor here. So it lyses this pathway right here. You don't get angiotensin 2, so you don't go and tense your angios. You don't go to the posterior pituitary or the adrenal cortex. Therefore, you don't um, retain fluid. So you are going to end up doing the opposite, right? You're going to end up um, peeing out your water and your sodium and retaining potassium. If you've taken your ACE inhibitor. 
On the other side, we go to our posterior pituitary um, secretes ADH. So we've taken our ACE inhibitor, so that doesn't happen, right? So we, instead of retaining water, we pee water if we've taken our ACE inhibitor. And you can remember back to our mnemonic, the guy keeps getting up to pee 20 times a game, um, and that's the action of ACE inhibitors. It makes you pee out your water, pee out your sodium, in exchange for setting your retaining potassium. So let's look at ARBs for a minute. ARB stands for angiotensin receptor blocker. So decreased blood flow to our kidneys, releases renin, renin causes the creation of angiotensin 1, and we haven't taken an ACE inhibitor, so we can convert our angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, but when angiotensin 2 goes to any of its receptors, it's blocked by our angiotensin receptor blocker, right? So we don't end up tensing our angios, we don't go to our adrenal cortex or our posterior pituitary, and so therefore we don't retain water, we don't retain sodium. So we end up having the same exact results as we did with our ACE inhibitor, except without this nasty cough that happens in the lungs. That's why you have a cough with ACE inhibitors, is because that enzyme action occurs in the lungs. So why would anyone take an ACE inhibitor when they could take an ARB and not get a cough? ACE inhibitors came first and they are much cheaper. So usually we give an ACE inhibitor first. If people don't tolerate it, then they can go to the more expensive angiotensin receptor blocker drugs, the Sartans. So one more thing I'd like to throw on here um, is why we might use ACEs and ARMS for congestive heart failure. Because um, they're used for blood pressure, and that's because it prevents you from tensing your angios and also is sort of a diuretic. It makes you pee out your sodium and water. But it's used for CHF, which is really important. So let's talk about what happens in this normal pathway in someone with congestive heart failure. So with congestive heart failure, your heart isn't pumping effectively, right? So you have poor cardiac output, so the blood flow to your kidneys is going to be decreased. So you, your kidneys are going to say, I'm not getting enough flow, I must not have enough flow. So they're going to release renin, angiotensin 1 is going to convert to angiotensin 2, which is going to go cause vasoconstriction, it's going to go to your posterior pituitary, your adrenal cortex, you're going to end up retaining water here, retaining sodium and water here. And your kidneys are going to say, I did a really great job. There was not enough flow, and I retained water, so I have higher circulatory volume. Now all that fluid is going to go back to your heart. Your heart is going to say, really, kidneys, you're, you're giving me a really difficult time here. I already couldn't handle the fluid I had, and now you've given me more fluid. So the cardiac output is even worse. Your heart is just drowning. And so cardiac output is even worse. Kidneys see, see even less blood flow, and they think, geez, I must need to retain even more fluid. So they do their job like they think they're supposed to, they retain even more fluid, and the heart's like, oh my gosh, I'm dying. So, people with congestive heart failure, we give them ACEs and ARBs to lyse this pathway so that their kidneys sort of have this communication disconnect with their heart, and their heart is able to pump better because their kidneys are not retaining water, thinking they're helping. So I hope that all made sense. Uh, comment below, let me know if you have any questions, if you found this helpful, um, or if you have any suggestions for future videos. Thanks for watching. I'd like to thank allnurses.com for helping me share my video.